Hello friends, this is the video of developmental biology where we will be discussing about sex differentiation. In sex differentiation, the undifferentiated zygote develops into male or female depending upon the genetic makeup of sex chromosomes. We see the precursor of gonads is the gonadal ridge which gives rise to bipotential gonad. And this bipotential gonad means this has potential to develop either into male or female gonads. And furthermore, in the developmental process, this bipotential gonad gives rise to sex cords or you can say gonadal cords. And these are still undifferentiated here. Now from here the differentiation will start by the presence of XX or XY chromosome. This sex cord will either turn into testes cords for males or will turn into cortical cords for females. When cell has got XY condition, then we have testes cords. And when cell has got XX condition, it will become cortical cords. So what makes XY the male and XX the females? If we look at the XY condition, then we see the Y chromosome has got one important gene on it. That is the SRY gene, sex determining region. This is also called as TDF, testis determining factor. While as on X chromosome, it has got DAX1 gene. Both the genes SRY gene and DX1 gene influences the sex differentiation. But the SRY defines the male. It is this SRY gene what makes you male, while as DAX1 does not contribute to the male factors. Now looking at the XX condition, we see both chromosomes expresses the DX1 gene. But it is the presence of two copies of DX1 gene what makes the condition turn into female and also the absence of Y chromosome helps it to become female. So these are the genes that determines the fate of sex cords within the organism. But these genes are one side of the story because not only these sex chromosomes helps in sex differentiation, there are also majority of autosomes that drive the sex differentiation in humans. Let's see what these genes are. We'll divide the two conditions as XY condition as a male and XX condition as a female. First of all, we will see sex chromosomes. In XY condition, we have already seen SRY gene on Y chromosome and DX1 gene on X chromosome. While in XX condition, we see we have two copies of DX1 gene, that is DX1 gene is on both chromosomes. Now let's see the autosomes that influence the sex differentiation. The testis differentiation is influenced by following genes present on autosomes. SF1 gene on chromosome number 11, that is steroidogenic factor 1 FGF9 gene on chromosome number 13 that's fibroblast growth factor 9 then we have SOX9 on chromosome number 17 SOX stands for SRY related HMG box then we have WT1 gene on chromosome number 11 that's Wilms tumor protein now let's see what autosomes influences the ovarian differentiation Two important genes are there WNT4 and RSPO1 both present on chromosome number 1. These genes influence the sex cords turn into cortical cords. So this is the brief overlook of sex chromosomes and autosomes that influence the sex differentiation. Now let's see the whole mechanism of sex differentiation where all these sex chromosomes and autosomes work together to differentiate the bipotential gonad. We see we have a bipotential gonad getting influenced by only autosomal genes first like WT1, SF1, NR5A. And when this bipotential gonad turns into sex cords then from here the sex chromosomal genes start to drive the differentiation. We see the bipotential gonad develops into two ways. When there is presence of Y chromosome and when there is absence of Y chromosome. When Y chromosome is present, it expresses its SRY gene, also called the testes determining factor. This TDF is a member of SOX genes, means SRY-like box genes, and it encodes for a transcription factor. Remember that SRY gene encodes for a transcription factor, testes determining factor. And this testes determining factor works with SFN protein encoded by SFN gene. So SRY protein or TDF when complexed with SFN protein then at that time TDF acts as a transcription factor that can upregulate the SOX9 transcription factor thus activates the SOX9 genes. 
then we see there is a direct interaction of SOX9 and SF1. Both these factors work together and regulate the transcription of antimalarian hormone gene, which in turn encodes antimalarian hormone. Thus, ultimately, there will be regression of malarian ducts in XY condition. And these malarian ducts are characteristic feature in females. So here they are getting suppressed. Now, furthermore, this SOX9 activates FGF9 gene, which makes FGF. FGF9 forms a positive feedback loop with SOX9. Thus, FGF9 is continuously being made in the forward loop. This FGF9 is important factor for sex differentiation because the absence of FGF9 causes an individual to develop into female. That's sex reversal even if an individual has XY condition. Remember this. This is the sex reversal case when FGF9 is suppressed. Now we have FGF9 in the cell. It makes the testes cords and its expression turns the sex cords into Sertoli cells. And also, the FGF9 antagonizes the WNT4 gene, which is responsible for female differentiation. So WNT4 gene is getting suppressed here. So there will be no female differentiation here. All the genes which should be activated in females are getting deactivated in XY condition. That's only due to the presence of this SRY gene. So we have a fully fledged Sertoli cell now and it secretes a signaling molecule called the DHH that's desert hedgehog. This DHH molecule that is the signaling molecule is received by a receptor called patched receptor PTC. And this PTC is present on Leydig cells and in some portabular cells. And the reception of DHH molecule by Leydig cells specifies its fetal Leydig cell fate in testes organogenesis thus creating male genitals. So this is how the TDF or SRY gene differentiates the bipotential gonad into testes. Now let's see how absence of Y chromosome and presence of two DX1 genes makes the female. The WNT4 gene which gets suppressed by the expression of FGF9 is active here since SRY does not activate the FGF9 here. So automatically WNT4 is active here. This WNT4 works with RSPO1 and initiates the WNT pathway. And in this pathway, we get the synthesis of beta catenin molecule. This beta catenin molecule in turn inhibits the SOX9. And we know SOX9 is important for the synthesis of anti hormone. And in absence of Y chromosome here, the SOX9 inhibition also inhibits the synthesis of anti hormone. Second thing we see here is that WNT4 suppresses the activity of 5-alpha reductase. You know this enzyme 5-alpha reductase catalyzes the formation of DHT from testosterone. And when this enzyme is getting suppressed, then there will be no DHT. And we know DHT is essential for the maturation of male genitals. So here we see no DHT means no male genitals. That means in females there will be no male genitals. So in this way, the bipotential gonad turns into cortical cords in XX condition. So this is how the sex differentiation works within the cells. Now there is another condition that is the sex reversal, where XX can turn into males and XY can turn into females. So how the sex reversal drives within cells, let's have a look at the genes that influence the sex reversal first. In XY condition, we see the FGF9 gene is turned on in a forward loop so that its encoded protein concentration maintains the concentration within the cells. But if this FGF9 gene gets mutated or its forward loop breaks, then at that time we see sex reversal in XY condition where XY can turn into females because here the genes from single X chromosome start show their expression. Or simply another condition is that if there is a mutation in SRY gene, this will lead to the expression of X genes automatically. So we get the differentiation into ODs. So this is the XY condition sex reversal. Now if we see the XX condition, there is no need to worry about sex reversal since SRY gene is missing here to create the testes determining factor. So the absence of Y chromosome in XX condition should not display any sex reversal process. But the sex reversal process also happens to occur in XX condition. First case is the interchange of fragment of short arm of Y chromosome containing the region that encodes the testes determining factor with the X chromosome. 
simply we can say a tip of y chromosome contains the srv gene and during recombination process a translocation occurs in which the srv gene on y chromosome is moved to become a part of x chromosome so we see x chromosome has now srv gene which is normally present on y chromosome so here the x chromosome contains srv gene the presence of translocated srv gene leads to an xx embryo developing into male so srv will lead to testicular development automatically this case is called the srv positive sex reversal now we have another case that's called the srv negative sex reversal where also in the absence of srv gene will lead to xx male phenotype xx males without srv genes have ambiguous to normal genitalia show incomplete to incomplete masculinization and are infertile but how it is possible to have males without srv gene one such theory is the gonadal mosaicism for srv gene in the gonadal tissue the presence of hidden mosaicism with a y bearing cell line was proposed by fechner till now no such molecular evidence have been put forward to explain why srv negative xx condition turns out to be males so this is all about sex differentiation in humans and sex reversal i hope you like the video if you like it give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe to this channel thanks